Imagine a world suddenly plunged into chaos by the invisible enemy of biological warfare. What would you do to survive? Picture it. A threat so silent, so invisible, it's like fighting shadows. That's the grim reality of biological warfare, a potential we cannot ignore. It's not about fear, but about preparation, about arming ourselves with knowledge and strategies. Today we're tackling that very question, offering you a lifeline of survival tips in such an unthinkable scenario. First and foremost, knowledge is your strongest weapon. So, let's delve into the world of biological warfare. At its core, biological warfare involves the use of biological toxins or infectious agents, such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi with the intent to kill or incapacitate. These agents can naturally occur or be artificially created in labs. They come in many forms, from deadly diseases like anthrax and Ebola, to toxins like botulinum. They can be introduced through a variety of ways, the air we breathe, the water we drink, even the food we eat. And their effects? Well, they range from incapacitation, serious illness, and in the worst case, death. It's a sobering reality, but one we must face head on. Understanding these agents, their delivery methods, and their effects is our first step in preparing for such a scenario. Now that we have a basic understanding of our enemy, let's discuss how to counter it. The first line of defense is preparation. Imagine you're in a castle and that castle is your home. To keep out any enemy you need a well-fortified castle, right? And in our case, that fortification comes from stockpiling essential supplies. Let's talk food first. You'll want to gather non-perishable items. Think canned goods, dried fruits and grains. These can sustain you for a long time without refrigeration. Next up, water. You need at least a gallon per day per person for drinking and sanitation. Consider water purification tablets as well because you never know when you'll need to make unsafe water drinkable. Then there are medical supplies. Your basics include bandages, disinfectants, painkillers, and any prescription medicines you need. But don't forget items like surgical gloves and face masks. Remember, these are just the essentials. There's a whole lot more you could add to your stockpile, depending on your needs. With a well-stocked bunker, you'll be better equipped to weather the storm. Protecting yourself from exposure is crucial. Now let's dive into the world of protective gear. Imagine a knight going into battle without his armor. That's what you'd be like in biological warfare without the right gear. First on our list is the gas mask. This isn't your average Halloween prop, folks. A high-quality gas mask is designed to filter out harmful biological agents in the air. It's your first line of defense, so don't skimp on it. Next, we've got hazmat suits. These full-body suits are designed to protect your skin and clothing from contact with biological agents. They're like your personal portable isolation room. Then we have gloves. They may seem trivial compared to the rest, but I assure you they're not. Gloves shield your hands, which are often in contact with potentially contaminated surfaces. Think of these pieces of gear as your personal shield against an invisible enemy. Remember, preparation is half the victory. Suit up, your life could depend on it. A secure shelter is your fortress against biological threats. Now you might be wondering, why is a shelter so crucial? Well, in the event of a biological warfare scenario, the outside air could be contaminated with harmful agents. Your shelter acts as a barrier, protecting you from these potential hazards. But what makes a shelter secure? First, it needs to be sealed off from the outside, keeping the contaminated air at bay. This can be achieved with plastic sheeting and duct tape, sealing windows, doors, and any air intakes. Second, it needs to be stocked with essentials. We're talking food, water, medical supplies, and don't forget a radio for important updates. Lastly, it should be comfortable. You could be inside for an extended period, so bring in some comforts of home. Books, games, personal items. These can help keep morale high. Remember, your shelter isn't just a room. It's a life-saving sanctuary. Remember, your shelter is your sanctuary. If exposed, decontamination could be your saving grace. Decontamination, ladies and gentlemen, is the process of removing hazardous substances that could harm or even kill you. It sounds daunting, but the process can be as simple as taking a shower. If you're exposed, the first thing to do is strip down. Remove all clothing, shoes, and accessories. These items can trap harmful particles, so it's crucial to get them off your skin as quickly as possible. Next, you'll want to wash thoroughly with soap and water. Scrub every nook and cranny, folks. The goal here is to wash away any dangerous substances. Be careful not to scrub too hard, though. You don't want to break the skin and give any lurking contaminants an easy route into your body. Afterward, dry yourself off with a clean towel and put on fresh clothes. Remember, the goal is to remove as much of the harmful substance as possible. Decontamination is not a guarantee, but it's a vital step towards survival. 
In the face of biological warfare, medical knowledge is power. Now don't let that scare you. We're not talking about becoming a field surgeon overnight, we're talking good old-fashioned, tried-and-true first aid skills. You know, the kind your grandma probably knew. It's about knowing how to clean and dress a wound, how to recognize signs of infection, and how to perform CPR. These are skills that could save a life, and they're skills that anyone can learn with a little time and dedication. Now hand-in-hand -hand with those skills, you're going to want a well-stocked first aid kit. We're talking bandages, antiseptics, pain relievers, and yes, even a trusty pair of tweezers. And remember, that kit is only as good as your ability to use what's in it. So, get familiar with it. Practice. In a world gone mad, your medical skills could make all the difference. Staying connected could be your lifeline. It's a simple truth, but one that becomes even more crucial in a post-biological warfare world. Communication is key to survival. It's the thread that ties us to the world, to information, and to each other. Imagine you're holed up in your shelter. Outside, the world is eerily silent, a stark reminder of the invisible enemy you're up against. But there's a tool, a lifeline, that breaks through this silence, a radio. This humble device becomes your window to the outside world, your source of updates, instructions, and perhaps even a comforting voice amidst the quiet. Radios, especially those powered by hand crank or solar energy, become invaluable. They keep you informed about the situation, about potential safe zones, and about recovery efforts. Information is power, and in this scenario, power can mean survival. In the silence of a post-biological warfare world, a voice on the radio could be a beacon of hope. Survival is as much a mental game as it is a physical one. In the face of biological warfare, it's your mind that will be your most powerful tool. Picture this. All the gear, the stockpiles, and the shelters won't amount to a hill of beans if you lose your head. Let's talk about mental resilience. It's about adapting to new circumstances, rolling with the punches, learning to cope with the unthinkable. It's about waking up each day, ready to face whatever comes your way. That's resilience. But resilience alone is not enough. You need hope. Hope is the light at the end of the tunnel. The belief that there's something worth fighting for. It's what keeps you going when everything else is telling you to give up. And above all, you need calm. Panic spreads like wildfire. But calm? Calm keeps your head clear, your decisions rational, and your actions effective. In the end, your will to survive may be your greatest asset. Surviving biological warfare is a daunting task, but with the right knowledge and preparation, it's possible. We've covered a lot in this video, so let's take a moment to recap the crucial points. Understanding your enemy is key. Know the basics of biological weapons, their effects, and how they spread. Having this knowledge will help you make informed decisions in a crisis. Next, stockpiling essentials is vital. Food, water, medical supplies, and protective gear are all critical. You'll want to have enough supplies to last you for at least two weeks. Speaking of protective gear, don't underestimate its importance. A good quality gas mask, protective clothing, and gloves can be lifesavers. Then, we discussed shelter. Your home or a specially prepared bunker can provide a safe haven in times of biological warfare. Remember, it's not just about having a shelter, but also knowing how to seal it off effectively. Decontamination is another critical aspect. Knowing how to properly clean and disinfect yourself and your surroundings can significantly reduce the risk of infection. We also touched on medical preparedness. First aid training and a well-stocked medical kit are non-negotiable. Communication, too, is vital. Staying informed and maintaining contact with the outside world can significantly improve your chances of survival. And finally, never underestimate the power of mental strength. Resilience, determination, and a positive mindset can often be the difference between survival and defeat. Remember, in the face of the unthinkable, your survival depends on your preparedness and resilience. Stay safe, stay strong.